Things can be so flippin' confusing. I don't know whether I'm coming or whether I'm going when it comes to heart rate training. Why is it so difficult? Hey everybody, my name's David Waters. I'm the Plant Powered Runner. Welcome back to my channel and thanks for the love. <laughs> a lot of you guys have been here for a while. Some of you are new to the channel and I just want to say thank you. Thank you for being here, for watching uh, the videos to the end. Thanks for the likes, the comments. It really doesn't mean a lot to me, so thank you. When I started using the Maptone method for my training, for my running, for my long runs, my short runs, every single run in between, I didn't know where it was gonna lead me and I didn't know how I would respond to all of it. What I did know was heart rate training can be very confusing. There's so many different types of heart rate training and they all have different names like here and here and here and here. There's so many different ways to calculate it. And then you end up with heart rate reserve. And how does that apply to your running? And should I use that? Or should I just stick with my maximum heart rate? Should I stick with the 220? Should I stick with Maffetone method? Should I stick with, there's too many guys. There's too many different ways. And so I think because there's too many options for people to select, calculating your heart rate doesn't necessarily mean that you have to go back to school, <laughs> right? It doesn't mean that you have to figure out how to do the math to calculate all of these numbers. And so I've used different methods. They all kind of come in around the same number. There's so many. If you really want to know what your heart rate zones are, you want to go ahead and get tested. Getting tested in a lab will determine where all of your heart rate zones are gonna be, right, for your threshold runs, for your the max that you could possibly go, right, your endurance, right, more of your aerobic zone where you should be in, for recovery. It helps with figuring all that stuff out. Let's figure out what your maximum heart rate is. Most people don't know. Go out for a jog, and you just run for like 10 minutes, okay? After that 10 minutes, oh, well, then start doing some strides, right? So go out and start doing some, you know, faster runs, right? And start to get that heart rate up, right? To see how far you can go. So run for like two minutes hard, right? And take a break and then another two minutes hard, right? See what you can get the heart rate up to. And so I've used that method uh, to kind of figure things out. I've also been on the track where I've gone ahead and I've done 800 meter repeats to figure out where my maximum heart rate is. And once you come up with your maximum heart rate, and my resting heart rate is when I wake up in the morning without an alarm clock, because the alarm clock's gonna scare the crap out of you and your heart rate's gonna rise. But if you wake up naturally in the morning and you're feeling really good, right? You could have your watch on and you could just kind of look at what your heart rate is. Or you could, you know, put your finger on your pulse for 15 seconds and then multiply it by four. But you do that three days in a row or four days in a row, okay? If you do it three days in a row and you come up with, you know, let's say uh, 50, 51 and 55, then you divide it by three, right? And then you come up with your resting heart rate number. Now to find your heart rate reserve, you would take 180 minus your resting heart rate, say 50, right? So 180 minus 50, which would give you 130. Heart rate reserve is the difference between your resting heart rate and your maximum heart rate. It's used primarily for determining heart rate zones during exercise and the amount of cushion in your heartbeats available for exercise. Should you use heart rate reserve? Your heart rate is an important tool in your training arsenal. It provides valuable feedback on your training intensity because it determines how hard your heart is working while exercising. Heart rate reserve is a little more accurate than maximum heart rate, but it requires a little bit more math. Yeah, no kidding. Why is heart rate reserve more accurate? Basing training zones on a percentage of your heart rate reserve is more accurate because it takes into account both your maximum heart rate and your resting heart rate. Your heart rate reserve is simply your maximum heart rate minus your resting heart rate and reflects how much your heart rate can increase or provide more oxygen to your muscles. If you want to figure out where your zones are for VO2 max and threshold runs and endurance and recovery, 
So to figure out where your zones would be, you would take your resting heart rate, which in my case would be 50. You would add your heart rate reserve, which is 130, which was your 180 minus your 50, okay? That's how you get your heart rate reserve. So 50 plus the 130 gives you 180. 180 multiplied by 0.95, which would give me 173 beats a minute. Okay, that's like a VO2 max. Or if you wanted a threshold run, like a tempo run, take the 50, which is your resting heart rate, add 130, which is your heart rate reserve. You would multiply that by 0 0.90 and you would get 162 beats a minute. If you wanted to figure out what your long runs, what your endurance, what your uh, cardio uh, zone should be, you would take 50 plus 130, which is 180. You would multiply that by uh, 0 0.75, okay, 75%, which would give you 135 beats a minute. And again, if you wanted to know your recovery, it would be 50 plus 180 times 0.65 which would end up giving you uh, 117 beats a minute. You see what I'm saying? The numbers are always kind of an average. You've got a couple of beats up, a couple of beats down. So if you're doing the Maffetone method and it's simple, right? Simple math, you're kind of freaking out that you're going above your number and oh my goodness, it shouldn't be. Relax, just breathe. It's okay. Nothing, the world isn't going to come apart. Look at this and say, if I'm not going to a lab, I don't know exactly what my numbers would be. Be kind to yourself. Figure out the plan. Figure out what those the heart rate is going to be and get out and put it into practice and stick with it. If you find that you're out for a run and it feels way too easy after a week, then maybe you bump it up a little bit. But if you go out and you find that it's a little bit too much, then yeah, you can reduce it down a little bit. It's the flexibility that you want to have in your training. So I think that's why people get a little bit too in depth, too a little bit obsessed. And I was a little bit obsessed when I started. But the more you look at this, there's all these different ways of doing heart rate training and it can be very confusing. So try to bring it back to, to this, right? Keep it simple. That's why I like the Maffetone method. I think the biggest thing about this whole thing with heart rate training is your consistency. If you can consistently get out and put in an hour of, of running in a week, you know, each and every day, or in some cases, two hours one day and you got a rest day, whatever it is, if you can put in consistent training, you build upon it. It's like compounded interest on on your money, right? Again, you're, you're, it's like depositing money into an account. You're building on that, okay? So it works. I know it works. Hopefully it works for you. Let me know in the comments below what you find what works for you. I'd love to know. Training by heart rate, it's a great way to reduce the amount of injuries that you get, burnout, losing weight works out really well you're able to go longer distances and just be able to enjoy running. A lot of people train way too fast. So I turn towards this method to help me get back into running and improve. And it's worked out really well. But if you're just new to it and you're just looking at getting into the whole heart rate training thing, it can be very confusing because there's so many different mathematical equations that you would have to kind of work your way through. And I think when people struggle using this method, they kind of revert back to what they were doing before. And then they find themselves in a situation where they may get injured or they burn out again. And if that happens over and over and over again, people may actually leave the sport and they say, just running is too hard on me. I can't handle it. But really that may have not been the problem to begin with. It could have been, it could have been that you just didn't give it enough time. I know that it works. I've, I've been down this road and I'm excited about my next journey about, you know, coming back again. And I think it's an amazing opportunity for me to kind of get it clear in my thick skull. <laughs> get it clear in my thick skull that I can't figure this out. I am smart enough to know better. 
and I know when to dial it back and, and, and when to go hard, when, in the, when I know I need to switch to 80-20. I've kind of done all those things. So for me, this is really cool to kind of document it once again. So I'm super pumped. I'm actually stoked about this. I can't wait to, to come up with, the, with those results. I think that would be awesome to see, you know, pinning it against, you know, what I did, you know, a couple of years ago, so. Guys, you don't need to believe anything that I'm saying. I'm just encouraging you to try things out. Try something different. Go out and, and write your numbers down. Journal about it. Put it into a chart. You know, temperature, uh, the weather, uh, how humid it was, the time of day that you ran, how you felt, what was your heart rate. Put it all down. Make a graph if you can. It would be so cool for you guys to be able to share those graphs in the Plant Powered Running Group on Facebook. And if you are not a member of that group, go ahead, click down below, in the description below. So there's a lot of different ways to use the Maffetone method. And I did a video right here talking about how to do that. And it's called Maffetone Method 101. And I think this video right here will really help you in your training to get faster at the same heart rate. So have a good one, everybody. Check out this video. And like I always say, everybody, Get out and run. See you on the next one.